Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orst, and today we are covering why your network is not secure. The reason and inspiration for this video comes from a recent transition in my job from test engineer to information security engineer. So far within the world, I've really learned a lot about IT uh, infrastructure, IT networks, and all the security that goes around there, uh, especially into protecting your data. Uh, another inspiration for this comes from the privacy uh, of this day and age in, in 2019. And it was making me think how we uh, secure our, our home networks, how we secure our devices. Uh, especially so in a recent Apple commercial, I saw how we have so much data stored on our digital devices over physical stored information, you know, on paper and ink, and maybe come to realize, well, how do our devices protect us, but let alone how do our networks protect us, especially at home, since I believe that is the first gateway to stopping any intrusion into stealing your private information uh, that we valuable, value so much. And so that's where I get all this from. And today I'd like to get started with reason number one, minimal firewall security. So one more thing to note before this is that when I'm talking about a home network, I'm talking about consumer grade uh, technology, consumer grade routing. And so uh, in what a router is actually is three in one device. It's a access point, a switch and a router. Um, it does have firewall capabilities, but when I talk about a router, that's what it is. Moving forward, minimal firewall security is in these devices. So what I mean by that is there's only three things you can really do. One, you have all inbound blocked. Two, you have all outbound allowed. And three, you have some inbound allowed. So I know the first and the third may contradict each other, but already what I mean by this is that we have a port forwarding rule. So we're allowed to actually forward some of the traffic that's coming from the internet into certain devices at our home. And so that's technically some inbound allowed, but you have to put a rule in place. But that's only port forwarding. There's much more you can do with firewalls, such as blocking outbound traffic. And because we're not allowed to block outbound traffic or not capable of in, in our routers, what this means is that if we ever visit a malicious website or if we ever try and go somewhere we shouldn't, we're not blocked. Um, I kind of make the analogy that our house is our network and the door, so to speak, is almost like the firewall. And so if you have someone who looks pretty shady and is coming up to that door, you know you're not going to open that door. However, the rules in the firewall just say, hey, I can open the door for anyone. It doesn't matter. So long as I start the connection out, then anything within that wire is allowed to travel through even if it's bad and so there's a lot of pitfalls in that and that's one pit uh one reason why the home network's not secure two is uh, a flat network so if you want to think of it this way a flat network is where everything lives on one range and so that's get very technical in a general sense mostly everything is in the 192.168.1.x range up to x equal 255. So this means you could have 255 devices on your network. Uh, most people do not have anywhere near that. So that's why they're like, okay, well, that's really all the network you need and everyone would be great. The problem with this is that in a flat network, everything can talk to everything and there's no rules in blocking them. So that Google Chrome, uh, Google Chromecast you have can talk to your laptop and that Nest thermostat can talk to your laptop and the Chromecast or any devices that you have. They can all talk to each other with, with no limits. So this becomes bad because now you let's say you get a friend who comes in and wants to get on your network because he doesn't have Wi-Fi or needs internet for his device, whatever it is. You give him the password, you let him on, and so now his, his iPhone now can talk to all of these devices. So your, your Chromecast, your iPhones, and your laptops, 
now can all talk to each other. And so this is bad because if one of these are infected and they want to pivot uh, as a hacker does within the network, they can move from device to device, infecting them and spreading malware. So this is somewhat like if you had a house. And again, the house is your network. And you have a renter that you want to rent uh, the house to. Or let's say you want to rent the basement. Well, you live upstairs. And renter lives here. Well, in a flat network, there's no wall here. So with this, I might as well just get rid of this wall. And say, hey, renter, you're able to move anywhere you want. So much for home privacy or security. Well, that's what a flat network is. But in network segmentation, I can go ahead and I put a wall right there. And it says, nope, you're only allowed to stay in the basement. It's like putting a deadbolt there so that they cannot move from the basement to upstairs. He's in his own network. You're in your own network. Everyone's happy. Reason number three, default passwords. So this is a classic one where everyone knows, or at least in my world, everyone knows that your default logins, some of them are admin, admin, or root, admin, whatever flavor you want to choose. But everyone knows that there are default passwords that you have. And so that's not a big deal to start off, but the problem with default passwords is that everyone knows them or they're very commonly known. And so when you're going up to set your home network and you got to log into that router and you have to start making changes or going through a, a wizard that helps you install it or make changes, updates, whatever, you're sitting, you're told to just log in as an admin and here's the password admin and then you go about your business and you complete it. However, they never tell you to change it. Generally, they're not enforcing you to even change it. And so that's even worse because now you know that device has a default password. And so let's say your friend Joe comes back on the network and he's got his own device that's already infected with malware and he sees that or the, the malware sees, hey, I'm going to try and ping the network interface, as it's called. So he's going to go and send admin, admin to this thing. And oh, guess what? Now you're compromised. And now this home network is completely compromised because once he's in the router, he can move anywhere from there since that's kind of the central access point. And so that's definitely one reason why you want to keep your uh, default passwords off or change from admin admin to something different. So reason four I, I'd like to say is weak Wi-Fi security. So for the most part now the standard is WPA2 personal. Well that's good however if you're on an older device some will support WEP which is bad because that's broken and WPA which is also bad because that's broken so I was kind of shocked to find this out about my uh, home router that I currently have is it supports something called WPA WPA2 personal so I was like okay I started reading the description of this and I realized that what this means is that it will support this type of network security for devices that are older and do not support this. So it'll downgrade its security to WPA to let me connect my super old, I don't know, super old device. Let's say it's a, it's a um, tablet or a, a Palm Pilot, something like that. So now, Here's a way you exploit that. Someone else who's a hacker tries to get in and forces WPA during the connection process. Well, what this means is that 
During that process, WPA being forced, this malicious actor can come in, start attacking with WPA, because it's going to send WPA back and start doing a crack right there. And then eventually what this means is that now when they crack the WPA, they've gotten into your network and that's it. Even though I support WPA2, my router gets to downgrade me without even me get having control over that. There's no option for WPA2 personal only, just this combination. And so that was actually very saddening for me to see that and let alone I've already started to change my home network because of that. Number five is default vulnerabilities. And so what many of you may not realize is that your home router while it's all three in one, it also has many features that make your network work or let alone help you get to the internet. There's things like DHCP, DNS, NAT, or even more capabilities. But what these do is they provide default services, usually that are open source, in order to get you onto the network. So this gives you an IP, this finds domain names or URLs and then this makes public to private and vice versa. So if one of these services has a vulnerability because of the version and standard that they have What may happen is that it's shipped out with this vulnerability, and that's it. Luckily, some do provide the ability to actually give you a patch or firmware update. Usually, this should be one of the first things that happens. However, not all of them do, and so when, there, when this does not exist, you still have that which is not good at all. So definitely want to keep in mind whenever you're purchasing new type of hardware that they come up with standard upgrades. Uh, it's not always the case, but generally you should be seeing this more often than I would say prior before. Unless these vulnerabilities are hardware vulnerabilities, then there's nothing you can do about that. Last, my bonus one is console settings for your admin or admin console settings. This one I found recently when I was going through this process and I noticed that with admin console settings uh, you can be vulnerable with the way they're set up by default or with options that you don't have. So I'll give you my example that I have. So my, uh, my consumer grade router that I currently have is a little uh, over a little higher grade um, but it's still consumer grade. And so it has an app to control the network. So I'll, it's a phone app, so I should be specific. Now this is encouraged. This is what they want you to use. Now it does have something like a uh, web app as well, but they don't want you to use that. They say, nope. Go to this. They totally want me to use the phone app. Okay, no big deal. However, the phone app is accessible through the internet. Which then means it can get into my network. So, okay, you know what? This is a convenience. However, it's only convenient to me if I want it to be convenient to me. So what if I don't want this? What if I do not want to have this on? What if I just want to get rid of this? I can't. The only way I can get to this controlling at home network is through that phone app. Now, like I said, there is the web app, but the phone app has actually more features than the web app itself. And so I'm stuck with not being able to 
shut off admin console to the internet. I'm stuck with this and I can't do anything about that because there's no way for me to shut that service off or shut the port off. More likely shut that port down so that it can't get in. It's always on. And so that's what really stinks or in my opinion is not really uh, enjoyable. They do have some passwords or ways for you to get in with uh, just standard admin uh, admin access however they really encourage this without law, any control on my end and so that's very disappointing so i thank you very much for following me in this video i really appreciate it and i hope you got a lot of value and learning about how your home network is not secure so i wouldn't worry too much though and be scared because things do not happen that often however it's just a good idea to know and be aware of what pitfalls you may have or security gaps. However, I would like to say that consumer grade routing is definitely making a step up in many ways. And so in the next video, I'd like to cover the ways that they are improving their security, especially with um, the new features that they're adding. So if you really liked it, again, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to hear about the next video or future videos, go ahead and click uh, subscribe and make sure you hit the bell for notifications so you know when it comes out. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.